Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about how to create a horizontal bullet chart. I do have some other videos that talk about creating bullet charts, both a vertical and horizontal, and this is just another one that adds to it. This particular step-by-step -step process is from John Peltier's blog. Uh, he runs a pretty good site on Excel, so you probably should check him out. I'll put some of the uh, URLs in the description of the video here, but let's go ahead and go through the steps that was outlined in his blog, and I'll just kind of show you how it works. So first off, you have to uh, have a table set up like this. Incidentally, uh, the bullet chart concept was created by a visualization expert called Stephen Few. Uh, this can be credited, um, this creation actually can be credited to him. And the bullet chart is, is basically a, a one chart that kind of puts a lot of information uh, into the chart without uh, wasting too much space. And the different bands here, the different colors, the darker gray to the lighter gray, so they represent different value ranges that our value can compare itself to. So we have this poor area, which is the darker gray affair, which is lighter, good over here, and excellent over here. And then we have our actual value, which is this black line. And then we have our target, which is this green um, line here. And those values take from here, uh, or supposed to take from here, where we have our actual value, maybe the actual amount. And then we have our bands here, the 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 poor here, the fair, good, and excellent, and then we have our target here. But to actually draw out a horizontal chart is a little bit more complex, and that's why we need these additional columns, this column one, two, and three. So basically, these three columns are, uh, maybe this is not probably a column because this is a horizontal, it should represent bars. So column column one will, will show bar one, column two will show bar two, and column three will show bar three. You'll see it when I actually chart it out. But with, with column one, all we would need is just to get the poor, fair, good, and excellent values. And they're just going to be references to the value. So if I see here, we have uh, cell D3. It will actually take from A3. Uh, similar here, we have uh, this fair value, which is going to take from A4. Uh, and this good value, which is going to take from A5. And this excellent value, which is going to take from A6. The same thing is going to occur in column three. They're exactly the same. Basically, it's a reference to those cells in column A. Now, with column two, this is where we get a little bit more complex. Uh, the 75% is going to take from A2 here, which is 75%, which is the actual value. Uh, the last one, I'll go with the first and kind of last ones. The last one is our target, and it's going to basically take from A7. And also, the, the excellent is going to take from um, A6. Now, the ones that are a little bit tricky is going to be um, E3 to E5, basically from uh, poor to good. Now these are values that are going to take from these partic this particular uh, calculation. Basically, it's going to sum up the starting from A3 to A3 here, and then it's going to make that sum. And basically, it's 50%, so it's just going to be 50%, and it's going to minus A2. It's going to be minus from here, and then it's going to take the maximum of those two values, and uh, see which one is the max. And then from that value, it's going to take the minimum of that value and compare it to A3 over here. So let me go ahead and just run this through this calculation. We can actually run it through the formula evaluator. I'll go under formulas here. And in formulas here, I can go to the formula auditing group and go click evaluate formula. And it's going to bring up this uh, evaluate formula window. And so it will show you with the eventual calculation. Now I'm going to go ahead and evaluate. And now it's summing. So it's going to sum, uh, since it was just A3 to A3, it's going to sum 50%, so 0 0.5. Then it's going to minus A2 which is it's going to minus 0.75, and that will give us, whoops, there it goes, 0.75, and that will give us negative 0.25. So what's the maximum of a negative 0.25 and 0? Well, that's going to be 0. So when you evaluate that, it's going to be 0. And now it's going to ask us to calculate the minimum value, which was the minimum, 0 or A3, which is 0.5. That's going to calculate 0, because 0 is lesser than 0.5, right? So we have 0%. So that's what it's doing here. And the second point, part here where it's fair, fair, it's going to be the same formula. But the thing that you'll notice is that there is no dollar sign in front of the 4 here or the 4 here, A4, because we have basically copied this formula down and we haven't put in an absolute cell reference for A3. This is a mixed cell reference. So basically what happens, let me go ahead and, let me go ahead and delete these two formulas. 
and we'll show you, right? So you have A3 to A3, and when you copy it down, we bring the fill handle down, it's going to copy the formula down. And you notice when I do that, that A3 um, on the last portions, it's going to go to A4. That's because we don't have the dollar sign in front of A4. So if I click on that, you'll see that it goes to A4 in this cell right here, and then the next cell is going to go to A5 right here. So basically when you copy it down, uh, the ones that have dollar signs in front of the letter and the number, they stay the same. But with the ones that don't have a dollar sign in front of the number, um, it, has, it just has a dollar sign in front of the letter, the numbers will increment. It will be relative. So let me go ahead and press escape to get out of that. So what happens is when you copy it down, the cell references change. They move up. So that go, that's still at A3. This is A3 to A4. And basically what this does here also is it's summing up A3 to A4. When I get down here, it's going to sum, whoops, when I get down here to cell E5, it's going to sum up from A3 to A5. So it's going to sum 50%, 25%, and 15%. And it's going to make those calculations as it goes through, as I showed earlier, and when I was going through the evaluate formula in E3. So once you have that all set up, what you need to do is go ahead and take from uh, C2 all the way down to F7. I'll explain this cell here in E7 later on when I uh, go ahead and go through the chart. But let's go ahead and make this chart here. So once I select that, I go to Insert, and I'll go and insert a stacked bar chart. So once that is there, you'll notice the access labels are not where I want it. I, I want the the series to be part of the series data here for, for the graph, not, not the um, labels here. So what I'm going to do is, when the chart is selected, I'll go ahead and switch row and column. And once that's done, we're almost there, but now we have to do some modifications to the chart. So basically what we want to do is we want to take this value. This is the target. So if I click on here, you'll notice that it's selected the target here. It's selected the target cell. This is the target label and then the cell for target. I want to turn this into a XY chart. So I want to right click and go to change chart series. Now this is Excel 2013, so the change chart type is a little bit different from uh, previous versions, but I'm going to work in Excel 13 and kind of describe it for you. Now uh, you can also probably do this in South 2010. It's going to be a different interface, but uh, pretty much the concept is the same. The steps are the same. You just need to find uh, the different areas for the windows to uh, make the modifications. So in this particular window, we need to go down to here and we want to change the target. And instead of having a stacked bar, we want to change it into an XY scatter. So we're going to select the first one, the scatter here, and click OK. So now it's an XY chart. So this basically value is the uh, 0.9 up here. But I want to change this. I need to change the, uh, the parameters of the X and the Y. So let me go ahead, and that's selected. I can either right click and go under Select Data, or in Design, we have Select Data here. So I can just go and click on that. It's going to be the same window if I right click it and select data that way. But since I have this open, I'm going to go ahead and go into Target, which is the one I want to change, click Edit. And for my series name, that's fine. It's going to be target. For my x value, I actually want that to be this. I want x to be that. And then I want my y value. I want my y value to be from the point. I want it to be this 0.5 because I want it to be in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and select 0.5 and click OK. And then click OK. And we have that here. And the reason why it's still up here is because the minimum and maximum need to be adjusted from 0 to 1. It doesn't, need, it doesn't need to end at 0.6. We need to increase it from 0 to 1. So I'm going to right click this axis and go into Format Axis. And then where it says Maximum, let's make that a 1. And then go, let me go ahead and close this. And now we have it where we want it. We, want, we wanted it in the middle. So that kind of fits there. Now we want to close the gap between uh, columns 3 and columns 1. So it's kind of sandwiching this particular column two er, column two series. So I'm going to right click. I'm, I, can, I can select anywhere in here. I'm just going to just going to select column three or bar three. Right click and go under format data series here. And once that happens, I'm going to have the series options. And what I want to do is I want to decrease the gap width to make it at zero. So once I hover that hover over there and make it down to zero, now we have the more of a recognizable bullet chart. It looks like it's the same. So let me go ahead and close this pane here. Now what I want to do now is I don't want to have that uh, zero. I want to go ahead and make that look like this little horse, this vertical bar. I have my little dot here that's selected. This is my my little series target point. I'll go ahead and go under the plus sign here. These are the chart elements. And I want to add a chart element, um, an error bar to error bar to that 
uh, that particular point. So I'm going to click on that and where it says arrow bars here I'm going to go ahead and hover over this arrow and then click on more options here at the bottom. Click on the arrow and click on more options. And once that comes up what I want to do is I want to change some of the parameters for the vertical arrow bar. I do not want a cap. I don't want an end cap. And this fixed value I want to change it to 0.35. And once that's done let me go ahead and close this. And then I pretty much have what I need for the um, the uh, the target here. Uh, all I need to do is just get rid of this horizontal line. Let me go ahead and click on there. You can see that it's selected. And just press the delete key. And now it's going to become a bar here. So I want to go ahead and get rid of this dot here, this mark. Well, let me go make, make this color a little bit more noticeable. I can go ahead and when I select it, I can right click. And then under the outline, let me go and change that to maybe... Uh, a red, maybe a red here, and then make the weight a little thicker. So that's still selected. This little smaller toolbar is still there, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and go under weight, and maybe make it a little bit thicker. Uh, let's see, one and a half point. One and a half point is fine. And I want to get rid of this uh, particular marker, this green marker. So I'm going to have that selected. Right click and go under uh, Format Data Series, and then for the marker, right here, I go under uh, the fill in line, go into marker, and just have no border. Actually, probably uh, marker options. I don't want to marker option. I just click on there. I have none. So I don't need to fiddle around with the border or anything like that. Once that's done, go ahead and uh, close this window or close this pane. And then there's other just formatting that I need to do now. I do. I want. I want to get rid of this. I don't really need uh, this particular axis uh, because it's just a little bit distracting. I can select that and just press delete. And I can just. Oh, I need to change this a little bit. So it depends where you where you like to have the horizontal line to indicate the percentage. Uh, if you want it at the bottom, that's fine. I kind of like it having it at the top uh, because you know you usually read from the top left uh, down. So uh, this kind of is distracting to have it down here. So what I can do is I can click on the plus sign again and go under which is axis titles. Click on that, and then I want to have the second secondary horizontal axis. And so what it's going to do. Oops, uh, not the title. Let me go. I want the axis here. I want to have the secondary horizontal axis here, uh, not the title. So I just click on that, and then it gives me my secondary horizontal axis. Where now I can just click there. Whoops. Let me go ahead and click out of there. Now I can go ahead and get rid of this one at the bottom. Let me select on that and just press delete. And then now you can see that it goes up to 120%. Really, we only want from 0 to 100%. So I need to go ahead and adjust that. Click on there, right click and then go into format access and then what I want to have is that maximum I want to change that to one so I just have one there so it's basically zero to one hundred percent so I'll close that and now we have our bullet chart pretty much now all it is is just kind of formatting that we need to do just formatting colors and formatting the size uh, I need to just go ahead and click this uh, right click and then change the fill color let's start with the bottom gray here I click on this right click and just move up the steps of the different uh, grays. That's a lighter shade. Click on click on this, right click, and go under fill. And then this, this third gray here, and then right click, uh, click on that, and then fill out that one for this color. And so now we kind of have the, the most of the chart. We need to change this to a black color. Just click on that. You can see it's selected. Right click, and let's make that a black color. Now we just need to change the size. So I'm going to go ahead and change the size. Let me go ahead and just uh, take the handle here and kind of drop it down a little bit here and maybe make it a little bit wider here. And so we pretty much now have our chart. I just need to remove these titles, this access title. Go ahead and click that, press delete. And now uh, probably I don't need to have that, that much in the legend here. I don't need this here, so I'll just cl click on that. If I click on... If I just click here, you see that the legend is also like that. But if I click again, individual components of the legend are selected. So I can just press delete for that one. And this value, I don't need that there. I'll go ahead and just press delete. Because I just want to have the legend show what's poor, fair, good, and excellent. So I have poor, fair, good, and excellent. And red is my target. Uh, this is the value that I want. This is that 75% value. Uh, poor is going up to 50% as we see here. Uh, fair is going is it's 25% in addition to that 50%, which makes it 75%, which is there. And then if you add 50, 25, and 15, we have our good. And then uh, excellent goes up to the 10% there. So it kind of fills it out there at 100%. So if we select this, you'll notice that the sum of that is 100%. So that's our bullet chart there. To complete this, maybe we'll just call this, give this a title, bullet chart, 
and there's our bullet chart. So this is another way to create a bullet chart. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.